What an incredible time we get to live in with all this technology that we can be in our homes, but still connected. And that's what we want, church. We want to stay connected at this time. Even though we can't be together, we can indeed stay connected. I don't know about you, but the times in which we live are strange. I mean, on Monday morning, just a few days ago, Kath and I went to the Tea Tree Plaza where we often go on our day off and we thought we'd go to the movies and we were told that the movie cinema was shutting down at 12 o'clock. And we loved the movies and so we just thought we would try our best to get in to see one last film. So we just said, you know, whatever's on, we'll just watch it. And uh, Vin Diesel's got a film out, Bloodshot. It's not his best film. I don't know if he does too many great films, but uh, we just sat there and it was quite eerie because we were the only ones in the cinema. And as we walked out of that cinema, we were the last people to leave. And it was quite strange because many of our young people work at uh, Hoyts and uh, they're all presently without a job because of it being shut down. And then we went to our favourite cafe there and and there was a lot of sadness and, and disappointment. We walked through the shopping mall and and all the food court was empty. And I know that all around the world we're experiencing the very same thing. And it's strange and it's eerie. And I gotta be honest with you, on Monday, my heart was really, really heavy. Thinking about all those people that have lost their lives. I mean, I don't know if you've heard, but just overnight, 832 people in Spain died because of the coronavirus. Many more have lost their jobs. And this is resulting in a great deal of sadness and a lot of panic. And so I wanna share a thought that hopefully goes some ways to combating this panic. And if you're taking notes at home and you want a title for a message, my title would simply be Peace Over Panic. And I think before I preach that today, it'd be great if we could just pray together. And my wife's in the auditorium somewhere, so I'm gonna ask her just to come and join me up here on stage and we're gonna keep our social distancing and we're gonna pray together and we're gonna believe that God will meet people right where they're at. And wherever you are, whether you're in your homes, whether you're going for a walk, whether you're just going for a drive to clear your head, whatever the case may be, We're trusting that God would meet with you this morning, right where you are. Kath, great to have you with us. Do you want to pray? Sure, I'd love to. Hey church, if you feel comfortable, those of you online, I'd just love it if you would bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray. Father, we understand that in times like this where we have no answers, where we're feeling all over the place, you're the greatest source that we can go to that you can come and bring a comfort that only you can bring. And right now, I uphold everybody who's watching online and just ask, would you come and be their peace today? Will you come and presence yourself amongst them, that they may, in the midst of their uncertainty, in the midst of their fear, in the midst of their anxiety, may they know a comfort from you and from the Holy Spirit. And I pray for those who are watching, who are here, who are tuning in, who may not know you. I pray that the truth of what is shared today would resonate in their hearts and they would have an understanding of not only who you are, but what you have done for each and every one of us. We ask that you would just move in people's lives. We pray you would move in this COVID-19 situation. And at the end of the day, I pray that your will would be done, not only in heaven, but here on earth. And we ask all these things in your wonderful name. Yeah, Father, may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Thank you, God. Be our portion right here. Yes, Lord. Right now. And in the darkness that we presently feel, I pray that your light would indeed shine. Yes. That the church would arise and hope be brought to people both near and far. Mm. Do it. And we ask that in your precious name. And everyone 
right around homes, wherever you may be, said a hearty amen. Amen. Thanks, baby. (laughs) Holly Taloy just joined us. Amrit joined us. Great to have you with us. So good. So good. Let's read, shall we, this morning, a passage of Scripture found in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11. It says this, Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You'll uh, You'll find, sorry, a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with angels praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom your favour rests. This is a portion of Scripture that's often read around Christmas time. But we're in between Christmas and Easter and I just thought it's just an amazing portion of Scripture for us to delve into at this time. At the birth of Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago, we see the angels appeared praising God. And the message they brought was a message of peace. And not only peace, but peace on earth. Which is a fun fact that that's where we are, right here, right now. This promise that the angels are talking about was a promise not afar off, but it was a promise for us in the here and in the now. See, God's gift to you And to me is the gift of peace. And let's be honest, right now, we're all looking for a little piece of peace. In actual fact, we'll do anything or go anywhere to get it. I know my wife, for example, uh, loves going to get her hair done. And she would represent most women out there. She loves to get her hair. She'll sit in the chair for about four hours just to get her hair done. And I don't know about you, as a guy, I don't get that. I don't understand that. And I'll never forget a few years ago, I asked, I said, Kath, what's the attraction? What's the fascination of of getting your hair done? Why do you love it so much? And why do so many of your friends love it so much? And Kath, with a a wry smile on her face, said, that's easy to It's not about the hair. It's not about the hair. It's about the peace. You see, when I'm sitting in that chair for four hours, there's no kids. And you're not there. Ouch. And all I have to do is just sit there and enjoy a coffee, a magazine, and the hum of the hairdryer. You see, it wasn't about hair, it's about peace. And peace is something that we all crave. And I believe peace is something that can be ours in the here and the now. You see, this is the promise of Jesus. When Jesus came some 2,000 years ago, the promise was that He would bring peace. And the interesting fact about the time that Jesus was born is that He came to Israel in a time where Israel we're not experiencing peace. It was a time of uncertainty. They were under rule, uh, uh, Roman, sorry, oppression. And the uncertainty was kind of like the uncertainty we have today. And there was a hope, a vain hope that this boy child, Jesus, would bring peace and hopefully deliver them from the Roman oppression. You see, they thought that Jesus would overthrow the Roman Empire. But as you study the life of Jesus, He lived some uh, 33 years on earth and He didn't do any of that. We don't even read of Jesus lifting a sword. And that tells us something. That tells us that God's peace is different than our understanding of peace. In actual fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 37, it says, He came and preached peace to you. You who are far away and peace to those who are near. The interesting thing about that is 
You can't find Jesus preaching a message on peace. You see, peace was not a message He spoke. Rather, it was a peace that He bought. In John chapter 14, verse 27, it says, My peace I live with, leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Jesus said, the peace I leave with you is not the peace that the world understands peace to be. You see, when we think of peace, we think of peace in terms of an experience or a location, or maybe it's the absence of pressure, the absence of violence, and all those can bring a measure of peace, but it's not the peace that Jesus was necessarily talking about. The peace Jesus was talking about was an internal peace not necessarily a circumstantial peace. He was talking about a peace that we can find, a peace that we can have, a peace that we can live in, in the day to day, in the here and now. And this morning, I wanna just highlight just a few things very quickly as to how we can experience this peace and in what areas we can experience this peace. See, Jesus was talking about us having peace first and foremost with God. You see, this is at the core of what we all need. The night Jesus Christ was born, there was a visit from the Magi and the shepherds. The Magi, they were the elite of society. The shepherds were the blue collar workers. And this tells us that God's heart is for people of all walks of life, from the greatest to the least. You see, we all need peace. It doesn't matter how much money you have. People think if I had more money, then I would have more peace. No, more money can actually create more problems. Whether we are rich, poor, whatever whatever it is, sorry, we need to make peace with God. Have you noticed people on their deathbed, they ever wanna try and make peace with God? And Jesus, He made it very easy for us to do that. He says, I'm bringing God to you. See, one of the names that Jesus was given was Emmanuel, which simply means God with us. God wants us to have peace first and foremost with God. And He made that possible. Secondly, not only does He want us to have peace with God, but He wants us to make peace with ourselves. See, what I've found to be true is that Jesus makes sense of me. I don't have anything like me, but, but I can be complex at times and, and, and I, I got issues and, and, and it's Jesus who brings peace to those issues and pre, peace to the complexities. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says that we see a poor reflection of ourselves. And we tend to look at ourselves and with our faults and our flaws. And we try to change who we are. We think if I was a bit fitter, if I was a bit richer, if I was a bit taller, if I was a bit slimmer. But the good news is that Jesus accepts us just as we are. And if He accepts us as we are, The good news, church, is this. We can accept us as we are. Jesus came that we might have peace with God, but also peace with ourselves. And when I think about what is going on in the world today with this virus on the rise, one of my biggest concerns is the mental health, the struggles people are having on the inside. And my prayer for this time is that we might find peace within. And the promise of Jesus is that we can have peace with ourselves. 
Not only does Jesus want us to have peace with God, peace with ourselves, but He also wants us to have peace with others. You see, when it comes to peace, relationships trumps environment. What do I mean by that? Well, you can be on a tropical beach. You can be in one of the most beautiful locations in the world. But if your relationship is not right with the person in that place, it sours the experience. Let's not let bitterness, unforgiveness rule our lives. Let's not let regret eat us up on the inside. There's a peace that brings perspective. Let's be honest, none of us are perfect. We all struggle from time to time with our own mortality. We all struggle with things that get on top of us. And when we start pointing a finger at other people and what they should be doing, it interferes with what God wants to do in our lives. God wants to come. And He wants to bring the peace so that we can live together. Now, obviously, you're not responsible for other people and how they respond, but the Bible does say, as much as it's up to you, let's live at peace with everyone. How about this for a challenge at this time that we work on ourselves, we extend grace, we be kind. I had to go to the shops just yesterday like all of us, we're running out of things, left, right and centre, particularly toilet paper. And so we found ourselves in a predicament. We needed toilet paper and a few other things. And so we went to the toilet paper roll and as most of us are finding right now, they're empty. And some of the tension and some of the squabbles that are taking place right now, we can be the difference. We can be the difference. As much as it's up to us, let's live at peace with people. And that peace can be found through Jesus. Jesus came that we might have peace with God, peace with ourselves, peace with others. But fourthly and lastly, and this is a big one, peace in the midst of difficulty. In John chapter 3, verse 53, it says, in this trouble, oh sorry, in this world, sorry, you'll have troubles. You're going to have troubles. Jesus told us we're going to have troubles. Being a Christian does not make us exempt from troubles. Being a good person does not make us exempt from troubles. But the good news is He wants to bring calm to our storms. He wants to bring a peace in the midst of our storms. In Matthew, uh, sorry, John chapter 17, Jesus prays a prayer that the disciples would not be taken out of the world, but that they would have the strength to go through their troubles. And I wonder just as I think about that, how many times are our prayers about get me out of here? And I think our prayers need to change to the prayers of Jesus. And Jesus' prayer was, give me strength, give them strength to get them through their troubles. We have an opportunity to go through. A few years ago, I had a blood infection that took me to hospital and I was there for three weeks. It was pretty dire for me for a while there. And I was fighting for my life. And I'll never forget the incredible peace that came over my life in that hospital bed. My body was shutting down. Family were coming in just to bring some relief and some fun. But there was an incredible peace in the midst of that. And I believe in this season, 
we can find a peace. No matter how bleak, no matter how dire, no matter how tough it may be, we can find a way through this with the peace of God. And in Philippians chapter four, there's a little pathway that the Bible gives us to help us practically through this time. It says, don't be anxious about anything, but to pray. Now, I don't believe that was written to rebuke us for our anxiety or anxious thoughts. I think Paul was saying, don't be anxious because he knows we get anxious. He was addressing the anxiety that comes. And so he was saying, don't be anxious, even though anxiety creeps in, but but let's pray. And remember to do a few things. And I wanna encourage you with this thought this morning, church. Number one, just, just be thankful. Just be thankful. There's so many things that are taking place right now that we can be thankful for. Just yesterday, I I filled up my car and I looked at the price of petrol. It was 94 cents. I mean, that's amazing. And I just remember thinking, God, I'm so grateful. Some might say, well, we can't drive too far these days and you would be right, but come on, let's hold on to the good. The Bible tells us clearly to hold on to the good. Doesn't say hold on to the bad, that's real easy. Have you ever noticed that? Holding on to the bad comes real easy, but we've got to hold on to the good. And so let's be thankful. Some of you only a few weeks ago were complaining that you didn't have enough time with your families. Well, guess what? This is an opportunity for us to be reconnected as a family. This is an opportunity for us to be reconnected in our marriages. Let's be thankful for that. Let's not miss this moment. Let's not wish it away. People say, I just can't wait for things to return back to normal. Well, for me personally, I don't want things to go back to normal. I want them to be better. And I believe if we respond well in this season, we can go through this and on the other side, find ourselves in a better place. So let's be thankful. Any thankful people out there? You're thankful this morning? Family? Friends, technology that we get to do church online this morning. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for our production team who've been working tirelessly throughout this week to be able to present an online experience for you. Thank you. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful right now for my friend Scott Thornton in New Zealand who's looking after my son. My son's unable to even come home right now, even if he wanted to. But I know he's in New Zealand right now and he's sitting together with my son and and looking after him. So so thank you. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Come on church, there's so much to be thankful for. Let's not become complacent, but let's be a thankful people at this time. Not only should we be thankful, but let's also be prayerful. Let's be a praying people at this time. And when I say prayful, uh, prayerful, I, I don't just mean little prayers. I don't mean just mantras. I, I'm talking about faith-filled prayers. I, I, I'm talking about praying with passion. I'm talking about praying with heat. I, I don't know if you've ever done ironing. It's not one of my favourite jobs in the world to do, but it is something that I do occasionally. And, but what I, what I know is you can work really hard ironing but if that iron's not plugged in and, and, and the iron's not hot, you'll never get rid of the wrinkles. It's not the act of ironing that gets rid of the wrinkles, it, it's the heat that's attached to that iron that gets rid of the wrinkles. And it's not just us praying faithless prayers that's the answer. It's us attaching our faith to these prayers at this time. Let us be a faith-filled, praying people. Let's add heat to our prayers. Let's believe that God is gonna do something great in this time and let's not be overly uh, consumed with negative thoughts, but let's be a praying people. Let not your prayers stop at this time, but let's be praying more and be praying with some heat, fire and passion. Can I get an amen back in the homes there? Fantastic. Not only should we be prayerful, but can I just say, let's, let's just be positive. Let's stay positive, church. I really believe with all my heart, the best is yet to come. 
Some people look at me as if I'm an optimistic guy, as if it's some kind of disease. I am optimistic by nature. But, but whether you're pessimistic by nature or whatever it is that you are by nature, this is an opportunity for us to get a hold of the Word of God and, and, and allow the Word of God to turn our thoughts to Him and be a positive people at this time. My, my blood type is B positive, so it's in my blood to be positive. But maybe yours is an O negative. But I believe God can redeem your blood type so that you can be a positive people at this time. Let's look for the good, as I mentioned earlier. Let's not give up. Let's not give in. But let's press in at this time. And the last thing we see, according to Philippians chapter 4, is just be obedient. Don't stop doing the disciplines at this time. Don't allow the news and the dread and the fear and the worry and the doubt that fall on the news right now to rob you of doing what you know you need to do. It's so great to have you with us this morning. I would say keep up this discipline. This is your time you'd normally come to church. Let's gather around a device with our families and go to church, albeit at home. Let's keep up these disciplines. Let's continue to read our Bibles. Let's read them as a family. Let's, let's create devotional moments. Don't stop these disciplines at this time. We need these disciplines in place more than ever before. I, I would also say, even though gyms are shutting down and there's restrictions everywhere, do something physical at this time. Because we need to stay not only safe, but we do need to stay sane. So whatever it is that we can do in order to achieve that, let's keep doing it. Let's keep up those disciplines and be obedient at this time. Kids, help your parents out by keeping a tidy room. And all the mums and dads said, Amen, thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> let's just continue to do what it is we know we need to do. You see, I know this to be true, that peace is not a location. Peace is not an experience. But peace is a person. And His name is Jesus. And there's an invitation for each and every one of us to come to Him on a daily basis. This invitation is not for the elite. It's for everyone. For God so loved the whole world that He gave His Son and Jesus Himself said in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to Me, all you who are weary, all you who are burdened, and I'll give you rest. I know this to be true right now. We are a people in need of rest. And the peace of God can bring that rest. He says, Take My yoke upon you and learn from Me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For My yoke, Jesus said, is easy. And my burden is light. Maybe you're listening today and you've never ever responded to the love of God. Maybe you didn't know you were able to. Maybe this message today is, is a brand new concept. But the reality is that God is madly and passionately in love with each and every one of us. And He wants to help you through whatever it is that you're going through. He wants to bring peace to your world. Believers and unbelievers alike, atheists, He wants you to experience His peace. But in order for us to experience that peace, we need to receive what is on offer. It's not enough just to know what's on offer, we've got to receive it. Can you imagine at Christmas time having all these great gifts under the tree? You hand one of them to a friend or, or a relative and, and they don't take it. It doesn't matter what the gift is. It doesn't matter what's inside the box. It doesn't matter what's been wrapped. If they don't receive it, they'll never receive the benefit of it. And so it is with our relationship with Jesus. Jesus came to planet Earth. He lived some 33 years. He showed us how to live. He went on the cross and died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again on the third day, proving He was who He said He was. And now there's an invitation to come. You want peace? Come to Me, says Jesus. You want hope? Come to Me, 
said Jesus. You want to have life with a capital L? Come to me, said Jesus. For us to experience these things, we have to receive Him into our life. Because Christianity in its purest, simplest form is a relationship with God that can be found through accepting Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life. But the choice is yours. He's not going to force Himself onto you. He leaves a choice to us. Maybe some of you are a little bit like the prodigal son that we read about in Luke chapter 15. You've had a relationship with Jesus. You used to go to church, but circumstances and situations that you faced in the past have caused your relationship with Jesus to become estranged. Well, we can learn something from the prodigal son and that is to turn around, come back and you won't be judged, you'll be received. And so if you've never ever accepted Christ into your life or maybe like the prodigal son, you've walked away from God and, and wanna come back to Him today, I'd count it a privilege and an honour just to lead you in a prayer this morning. And I wonder, wherever you are right now, if you could join in with me as I pray this prayer, that'd be fantastic. Jesus, I thank You for loving me. I thank You for dying for my sins. I desire to know You more. I open my heart to You. I surrender to You. Forgive me of all of my sins. Show me your ways. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Hey, wherever you are, if you prayed that prayer today, either for the first time or as a recommitment to Jesus, we're so excited for you. Well done. This is a great decision. And I want to encourage you to stay online, stay tuned, and our online host will help you take your next step. Church, wherever you're listening, Thanks so much for joining us. Remember to choose peace over panic. We're praying for you this week. We're praying that you have a great week. And we look forward to seeing you in church online next week. What a great message from Pastor Tony. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, I just want to say congratulations and let you know that this is the best decision you'll ever make. At Victory, our heart is to help you take your next step. So if you said yes to Jesus today, we would love for you to let us know so that we can help you on this brand new journey. Hit the link in the comments section or head over to our This Weekend tab in our app and select I Said Yes. Here you can put in your contact details so one of our team can reach out to you this week. Alternatively, if you would like to receive prayer, please click on the I Need Prayer button on our app or use the link below. Your prayer requests go straight to our pastoral team so they can keep you in their prayers. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. And remember, just because the service has ended doesn't mean church has. Our connect groups are the best way for you to stay connected to the people of Victory Church. If you are not yet in a group, why don't you call the office or email care at victorychurch.net.au. We would love to help you find a group that is just right for you. Remember, church, we are better together. We look forward to seeing you next week. I just want to love you. I just want to love you.